Witness the conclusion of the first arc when Rook and his avian allies attack the arc to stop Ursaw from finding the other wardens. Can Rook get to Direwolf and Carapace before they become Ursaw's next victim? Let's find out in our review of Rook Exodus number 6 from Image Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Rook Exodus number 6. If you're a comic creator, I want you to take note. An arc or a story should always end with change, either through one or more characters' growth or some kind of new status quo. Writer Jeff Johns rightly ends the increasingly great series with a new status quo that resolves Rook's greatest challenge while opening new avenues to explore. In other words, Rook Exodus number six is a winner. Before we dig in, let's recap briefly what happened last time. When last we left Rook in Rook Exodus number five, Ursaw tried to smoke Rook out of the nearby woods with an intentionally set forest fire. During the harrowing chase, Rook experiences hallucinations that force him to confront memories of his father, leading to a newfound spirit to fight for the animals of Exodus and fully bond with his flock. In other words, his father died saving the animals, now he's willing to give his life to do the same. So that brings us to the current issue. In Rook Exodus number 6, Ursaw's Ark cuts a savage gash through the forests and fields. Now that he has the wildlife grid, which is the device that connects all of the wardens to each other, Ursaw can locate every warden on Exodus and kill them for their helmets, giving Ursaw complete control of the planet and all the wildlife it contains. What Ursaw's caravan doesn't realize, until it's too late, is that Rook has an army of his own and they're launching an attack. Jeff Johns wastes no time jumping into the action to set the pace and energy as high as possible for the arc's finale. Johns gives Ursaw's lieutenants a brief scene of dialogue to remind readers of their current predicament, and that's smart because a lot's happened. We want to know where everybody's situated before the action kicks in. But once the action does get going, there's nothing more to be said. Rook launches over the caravan from a nearby hill with a tricked-out assault vehicle. Now that Rook has fully bonded with the flock, Warden and the birds act as one to swarm the caravan. They blind the drivers and create general mayhem, disrupting the entire caravan. Rook unleashes a hail of gunfire from the miniguns mounted on his vehicle, clearing a path to the Ark so that the birds can attack. This is a very visual finale, and uh, it's all about the spectacle and the action. But to kind of give you the sense of scale of what's going on here, imagine the over-the-top spectacle of the Road Warrior, and you'll get the right idea. Rook is singular in focus and purpose. Now that the flock is on his side, they swarm, weave, and attack as one with Rook's thoughts. They're essentially an extension of himself, and it looks amazing. The scene switches to inside the Ark. There we see Ursaw intimidating Direwolf with his plans to kill all the Wardens, including her long-thought dead father. She, of course, refuses to join him, but to add incentive to his offer, Ursaw promises to spare Carapace, who won't survive if his men succeed in cracking open his armor. Suddenly, the sidewall of the Ark's control room explodes inward when Rook arrives to save the day. Yes, yes, from that description, sure. Uh, Jeff Johns goes for the basic route of having the hero show up in the nick of time to save the damsel in distress. But it works because the setup is completely believable and well-constructed. It's hard not to get your fist pumping when Rook makes a spectacular entrance. It's cliche, you may even say it's a little bit tropey, but it 100% works. Rook fires a grappling hook through Ursaw's shoulder to hook him like a fish. Rook's vehicle remotely yanks Ursaw outside to the hull of the Ark, buying Direwolf time to reclaim her helmet and race down the hall to stop the men working to crack Carapace's armor. Ursaw may have been dragged outside, but the fight is far from over. The issue concludes with the swarm of birds under Rook's control making a sacrifice. The revelation about Ursaw's history, which is not what anybody expected, and the next era of survival on Exodus is about to begin. Overall, Rook Exodus number 6 is one of the increasingly rare examples of an arc that finishes much stronger than it started. Many of the world-building questions like, you know, what's a world engine anyway, remain frustratingly unanswered. But the series has grown us, thanks to Jeff Johns' action-packed writing. Let's switch gears for a second and talk about the arc. Rook Exodus number 6 is made all the better by Jason Fabok's exquisite artistry, jaw-dropping detail, and imaginative visuals. Every panel is a cinematic quality work of art, and Brad Anderson's hyper-detailed coloring application is amazing. Ghost Machine has earned its reputation as the imprint with the best art around. So this is the end of the arc. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture for what this means for the title. 
Rook Exodus number six may be the end of the arc, but the series isn't over. And that's officially stated. The title is going on hiatus and will return sometime in 2025. We don't have the exact date yet, but when we do, we will get it on the schedule, we will review it, and we will continue to follow this impressive series. Final thoughts, what do we think about Rook Exodus number six? It's a banger of a finale to the first arc with fast paced action, stunning visuals, and a satisfying conclusion. Jeff Johns leaves some world building questions unanswered, but he has more than made up for those gaps with edge of your seat thrills. Plus, Jason Fabok's mesmerizing art is impossibly made better, if you can believe it, by Brad Anderson's surgically precise coloring. This is a fantastic looking comic, and it was a fantastic way to end the first arc. Therefore, Rook Exodus number six earns a 9.5 out of 10. We had our doubts about the series when it first started, but Rook Exodus has turned out to be one of our favorite titles. But what do you think? Are you as sold on Rook Exodus as us? Leave a thumbs up if you are, and drop a comment below with which Ghost Machine title is your favorite so far. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.